for me, the journey has been, it's normal because uh, even contesting an election uh, from a constituency, you see most uh, candidates will be men. And so that's the normal aspect of it. But also challenging that most times you want to whisper something to some person who is supposed to be close to you, like you, you understand the language and then you don't have anybody to talk to because all the rest people are male. And so that's the challenging part of it. So assuming you have one woman or another woman, you'll always think um, alike. And sometimes when you bring issues on gender, they feel, why are you talking about gender here? And so that's, that's the um, negatives of this kind of thing. So it's, it's very, very challenging. But I believe that all of us, we attended the same secondary school, the same primary school, the same university, so you've been seeing these boys. And so, for me, that does not stop me from doing what I have to do. It's just that you wouldn't get that support, like the gender support you need. Because if you have more female, you understand. Like, if you are talking issue, raising issue of gender, a woman who has given birth know where it pinches. And so where you want to drive home your point, to the extent that somebody who wears the shoe know where it pinks, you won't find the support. because it will be flat on their face because they don't really understand the pains that you go through as a woman and the challenges that women face here. So that's basically what it is. But apart from that, work-wise, everybody's competing. They don't look down on me because I'm a woman. And of course, nobody will do that because what's it's important is what you're bringing to the table. And mind you, I'm representing a constituency like any other principal officer is representing constituency. And they've been very supportive to that extent. But honestly speaking, if we are more women, then our voices will be louder and clearer. It's, you know how it is even in the family where a woman is talking and like your, your siblings, they're all, they all male and you're the woman. They will always say, are you a woman? That psych is there. And so apart from that, this one year has been very exciting. Apart from the... Um, setback of the COVID, but honestly speaking, it's generally interesting. I, I can assess this house um, in the last one year and would say that this house have done tremendously well. Apart from the kind of bills we are passing, including the infectious bill, that shows you that we are thinking how to move things forward. That shows you that the condition we find ourselves, even with the COVID, that we, we don't like it. And so we are trying to add value. What do we do to add value? So this Ninth Assembly is a house that is constantly thinking about how to add value. And mind you, we have done a lot of interventions. But this Ninth Assembly was the only house since I entered here that passed budget within December period. How many days? And people are saying, oh, you rushed it, you're a robust staff. Night Assembly is not a robust stand house. What Night Assembly has done is to show, yes, you can criticize. Yes, you can oversight. Yes, you can be objective in whatever you do. Because if you remove objectivity and you bring psychophancy, then everything is going to fall flat. So Night Assembly has lived up to expectation to say, yes, we had this legislature, but we are ready to cooperate with other arms of government to move Nigeria forward. And of course you know that the three arms, we are working separately, but we must work for the general good of Nigeria. And if we are working for general good of Nigeria, there must be a, a point that three arms will meet to take a, a decision that will better the country. And so we are not rubber stamp, we are very effective, we are very passionate about Nigeria unity, and it's nice assembly that we have this uh, logo that we say uh, nation bu building joint task. So Night Assembly has leveraged on the issue of jo uh, uh, nation bu building joint task to say the joint tax mix, the executive have to join forces with us, the judiciary have to join forces with us, uh, then we will bring dividends of democracy to the people. Mind you, it's not about antagonizing anybody that you achieve. You can engage people um, positively, you can uh, engage people rationally, you can engage people 
without sense of humility and compassion and then give to the general well-being of the country. Because bottom line, if at the end of the day, Nigerians don't benefit, if what's use? So it's of no use to fight. It's only when you fight that people will know oh, that you are, you are uh, doing your work. Our work as legislators, as legislators is not to fight government. Our work as, legislat as legislators is not to antagonize government. Where our work is not to uh, hit people or put our, our legs on the neck of people. So that's not our work. Our work is to collaborate. Our work is to do oversight. Our work is to uh, make sure that we expose corruption. Are, and of course, when we expose corruption, that doesn't mean we are going to prosecute. People see us as prosecutors. We cannot prosecute. That's not our job. Our job is to expose corruption. That means in the course of oversight, if we see anything that's wrong, we say it's wrong, and then make, bring it to the public, and then direct uh, the agencies that are involved to take over prosecution. So Nigerians should stop looking at us as prosecutors. We don't prose prosecute. And also, they should not stop looking at us as people who implement. We don't implement. See, because when something happens and it's not good, they say, oh, it's National Assembly. Uh, they don't pay salary, they say it's National Assembly. People are on strike, they say it's not. It's not us. Our own is lawmaking, but in the process of lawmaking, we must track where the uh, funds are. That's where the oversight comes in. And so, and some people say, oh, they are just talking, talking, talking. They don't do anything. That's our job. Because to expose anything means you have to bring it to the public for public to know. And so that's our job. And I believe that we've done well in Ninth Assembly, but there's still room for improvement. And we're listening to Nigerians on a daily basis. And that's why on every particular issue, you see our stand. You know where we stand on issues. And generally speaking, 90% of the times, because we are not perfect, we stand with Nigerians and uh, the good of uh, Nigeria at large.